Hey guys, so today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to buy and sell crypto. And if you're someone that thinks Bitcoin is going to zero dollars, you can actually make money. Yes, you can make money when the prices go down. So I'm going to be teaching you guys everything. Make sure to watch the video and let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so today's video is a buy bit tutorial. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to buy Bitcoin, sell Bitcoin, and even make money when Bitcoin is crashing in price. So today I'm going to do a full tutorial on the platform platform guys so let's get straight into today's video by the way all the timestamps are down below so you can follow along each and every step and before we start one thing that's great about bybit they always have sign up bonuses so i'm gonna leave a link down below where you guys can get a free cash sign up bonus when you register pretty much if you are looking to trade they're just going to give you some free money to start with so use the link down below and let's get straight into how you trade guys all right so once you click the link and you're on the website all you need to do is sign up for an account all you need is an email address guys so just go ahead click that button fill in all your details i'm not going to take you through these steps guys it's pretty straightforward you fill in your email put your password all that stuff and now you have an account and this is where i'm going to take you guys through how to actually get started put some money in and start trading so let's go so now that you have your account set up guys you want to go over to your assets all right you just click the top right corner head over to your assets and this is where you can do everything guys this is your dashboard you can see all the crypto and from here is where we're going to start okay so the first thing you see over here is your spot account what this means is the crypto you've bought and already paid for. So for example, if you bought one Bitcoin, you now own one Bitcoin. It's yours, it's in your spot account, and that's what that pretty much is. It's all the crypto that you've already paid for. Okay, so the next thing you have is your derivatives account. This is where you have your derivatives and your futures. Now this is a little bit different, and this is where you can actually put some USDT or Bitcoin and leverage up your trade. You can basically borrow extra money to trade with, but I'd only recommend this if if you're more experienced in trading. I'm going to get onto this later in the video, guys, but if you're someone new, I wouldn't recommend doing this right now. Okay, now the next thing which is really important when setting up your account is your security settings, guys. Obviously, at one point, you're going to have a lot more crypto in the account, so you want your account to be secure. So the way you want a secure account is just go to the top right and go to account and security, guys. As you can see, I'm doing it right now. And once you're over to your security, the thing that you need to set up is your Google two-factor authentication. Now, the reason this is so important is because you you don't need KYC, you don't need a passport copy. This is the only way you're going to keep your account safe, guys. It's really easy. All you need to do is click enable and download the official Google Authenticator app on your phone, guys. It's really easy, guys. You just scan a QR code and it sets up a six digit pin, which changes every 30 seconds. So it keeps your account safe. And that's pretty much what you're going to be using to log into your account, send crypto. Okay, now that we're done with all the security, let's get straight into how to trade, how to buy the crypto. But the good thing about Bybit is it actually lets you buy crypto with cash which is something i've seen most people struggle with but how can i actually buy some bitcoin so we're gonna get straight into that guys and they actually do everything on this one platform which makes it super easy so if you're someone that has dollars pounds dirhams in your bank card you can do that so we're gonna get straight into it guys you just head over to buy crypto as you can see right now we're on the page where you can actually buy some crypto with your money so as you can see when you're on this page you can select the currency that you have so i'm in dubai guys we use dirhams which is ad but the Depending on where you are, you can just select your local currency and pay with card. Now, the slight downside is obviously you're going to have a small fee because you're using your card. Ideally, you do a bank transfer, but this is really good for people starting out, which want to put smaller amounts. I think it's completely fine, but this is how you can actually use your card to buy some crypto. So guys, now that you put your currency, for example, as you can see, I put dirhams, you can actually choose what to buy. So you can buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, or USDT. Now what USDT is, it's actually a stable coin, which which means it will always stay the same price. Whereas Bitcoin and Ethereum, the price goes up and down. So pretty much all three of these are really good coins, guys. But if you're someone that doesn't know what coin you want to buy, then you should probably buy some USDT. And from there, you can actually convert your USDT into any crypto. But if you're someone that wants Bitcoin or Ethereum, you can just go ahead and buy Bitcoin and Ethereum straight away. So guys, as you can see right now, I quickly put in an amount 500 dirhams and it actually gives me the conversion of how much USDT I will receive. All right. Now they actually use Simplex, which is a third party platform 
but it's used across hundreds and thousands of different platforms. So it's super secure and it's as easy as that. Now you can put your money into your crypto wallet. All right, now the next thing is how do you get your own crypto into your wallet? And right next to it, you can see deposit crypto. So if you have your own crypto already or your friend has some crypto that they want to deposit for you, this is where you can get your deposit details. Now, obviously, as you can see over here, you can pick the coin you want to deposit, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all others. I'm just going to quickly click on Bitcoin and over to the right, that is where you get your deposit address. I'm going to blur mine out because I don't want you guys sending me any crypto, but essentially that is your Bitcoin address where you can send Bitcoin to it and you can get all your other addresses by just selecting the coin. Okay, now moving on, how do you actually withdraw your crypto? So we're going to go back over to accounts, which is the main page. And over here, you can see withdraw crypto. So this is actually how you can move your crypto into like a decentralized account. Or if you're someone that has like a ledger USB, you want your crypto completely decentralized. This is where you can actually withdraw your crypto. So once you're here at the withdraw, guys, you can see all the coins that you can withdraw. Um, pretty much all of them are there. And essentially, you just pick the coin you want to withdraw. So just for an example, I'm going to pick Bitcoin. And you want to make sure you pick the correct blockchain, guys, because you don't want to make that mistake where you're sending Bitcoin on the Ethereum network and it doesn't work. It's just going to be a big mess. Now, if you're someone that wants to withdraw USDT, they have the Ethereum network ERC, but that's a little bit expensive, but they also have the TRC, the Tron network, which is a lot cheaper. So if the platform you're sending to supports that, I definitely recommend sending it through the Tron network, guys. It's just a lot cheaper to send it. So yeah, now that you understand that, guys, whichever platform you're sending to, you just go and copy your wallet address from there, paste it in here, and put the amount and send. It's as easy as that, guys. It's not that complicated. You're just sending from one wallet to another. So you just copy and paste the address to whichever wallet you want to send it. All right, so now that you know all the basics, it's time to get on to how you can actually trade, all right? This is where it gets a lot more serious, guys. I'm going to take you guys through derivatives, how to actually trade on leverage, which, as I said, if you're someone that has $1,000, you can actually trade with a hundred thousand dollars on leverage it is a lot riskier so i want to get onto all of that but i'm going to go inside on my computer because this is where it gets serious all right so now it's time to get onto the actual trading now the first thing i'm going to take you guys to is to your spot account now this is where you guys can actually buy and hold crypto so you want to go over to your main page guys this is where your spot account is as you can see on the screen and this is kind of where you can buy crypto and hold it in your account all right so if you like bitcoin buy some bitcoin hold it right there now the cool thing is guys you can also transfer between your derivatives account to your spot account so if you have any money there you can swap it out you can transfer over to your spot account and hold it there now the way you do this guys you come to your main page your assets page as you can see so first things first make sure you have some cash in your account where you can actually buy some crypto and now to do this all you do is come over to the right and do trade now or you can choose the actual coin in the list of coins as you can see guys pretty much all the coins are there usdt xrp bitcoin ethereum the list goes on and on and on but you can do it both ways. Now, I'm going to click on trades just to keep it generic, guys, because I know all of you probably have different coins you want. So we're going to press that button. You come over to this screen, guys. This is where you can see the graphs. Now, obviously, it comes over to Bitcoin, um, which is the most popular, guys. And this is kind of where it gets interesting. Now, just as an overview of this screen, you can actually see the currency pair that you're trading, guys. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you're someone that doesn't know exactly what coin you want, it's best to put your money in UST Tether. It's a stable coin that always stays at $1. From there, you can trade that into any crypto. So if you have $500 of USDT, you can convert it into $500 of Bitcoin or Ethereum or pretty much any coin. And USDT is pretty much the one coin that trades against anything in these pairings, guys. Now, as you guys can see, USDT is paired against Bitcoin in this example. If you come over to Ethereum, you can also see that USDT is paired against Ethereum, but it's also paired against Bitcoin. Yeah, that's why I recommend if you guys are starting out, just put some money into USDT and then decide what coin you want. So as you can see, at the top of the screen you also have all the information guys you have how bitcoin's prices changed for the past 24 hours you have the highs the lows the 24 hour volume and all that good stuff guys now as you can see there's also an option on the right side it has a standard screen and an advanced screen now the advanced screen actually uses trading view which means you can actually put a bunch of indicators on your screen now i know a lot of you have probably watched trading videos before where they have indicators and they have arrows about the predictions of where it's going to go now pretty much you can do all of that on advanced screen you can actually draw out indicators for yourself kind of predict where the coin is going to go if it's going to go up in price down in price so if you're someone that does that that's really
pretty cool. But just to start out, we're going to use standard view. I'll get onto all of that stuff later on. Now, you can also pick what type of chart you want. You have a candlestick chart. You can change it to an aerial chart, guys. I mean, it just depends on what you want to look at. doesn't really matter for me too much. Now, personally, I use the candlestick chart, guys. It's a lot better when it comes to knowing how the price is moving. But again, it's what you guys are comfortable with. Now, as you can see on the right hand of the chart, this is where you have your order book system, guys. It's pretty much the standard order book system you have in any trading platform. It pretty much shows you all the orders happening currently. Now, if you come to the middle, this is the mid price of the Bitcoin US dollar trading price right now. Now, as you can see, if you want to buy some Bitcoin, the price you see right here is the best price you can buy it. And if you want to sell some Bitcoin, the price you see in green on top, this is the best price that you can sell it. Now, obviously, guys, when it comes to trading, the way you get the price of Bitcoin just depends on how much the lowest selling price is and the highest buying price. And on the right side, you can see all the recent trades happening. So you can see every Bitcoin buy that's happening and every Bitcoin sell. Yeah, there's just tons and tons of them that's just going to be updating every few seconds. So guys, to do all of this, you come over to the right hand side. This is where you can buy and sell, put your limit orders, put your market orders. Now, if you can see, the first thing you see is a market order. Now, with the market order, you don't get to choose how much you pay. You pay basically what the price is right now. So if you want to buy $500 worth of USDT, it gives you whatever the price is right now. Now, once you decide the amount, $100, $200, you just click buy BTC. Now, what's going to happen is the system comes over to the lowest selling price of Bitcoin Bitcoin, which I showed you guys previously, and it just buys $100, $200 of that Bitcoin. Pretty much whoever's selling it for the cheapest, you're going to go ahead and buy that, which is how it works. So guys, as you can see on this chart, um, all these prices, this is someone selling Bitcoin. So if the cheapest price right now is $20,000, you're going to pretty much buy that Bitcoin up. And from there on, it just gives you the next cheapest price. For example, if you place an order of a million dollars of Bitcoin, obviously one person might not be selling a million dollars of Bitcoin at once. So you're going to go ahead and buy buy up all the cheapest offers on the market until you get your million dollars worth of Bitcoin. It's just that simple. Now, the good thing about buying like this is it's quick and easy. Now, personally, I do a lot of my buys like this, but the downside is you might be paying a little bit more because you can actually save some money if you do limit orders, which I'm going to get onto, but that just depends on how the market is also moving. Now, the other way of doing things is the limit order, which I'm going to get onto. So guys, if you come over to the limit order, this is where you can actually set an order price. Now, what that means is, for example, if the current price of Bitcoin is $20,000, you can set a limit order to $19,000, which means that I only want to buy Bitcoin when it's $19,000. So obviously, guys, if the price of Bitcoin is fluctuating from $19,000 to $21,000, it will only buy you the Bitcoin every time someone sells it to you for $19,000. Now, the good thing about this is you can save some money. Now, the bad thing about this is if you're in a bull market and the price of Bitcoin is just constantly going up and you don't get to buy it at the price you want. Well, you might miss out on buying it and you might just have to buy it at a lot higher price later on. But it just depends, guys. Right now, the market we're in, you do see a little bit of a balance and an up and down happening. So limit orders can work well now. But when we're in a bull market and the price is just going up, it can mean you miss out on a lot of money because obviously your order will never get fulfilled. You'll never get the Bitcoin because no one will be selling at that price. And you're probably going to wake up the next morning having to pay a lot more money than you wanted to. So guys, to get your order price, as you can see on the left side where we have all the current prices, I could just go ahead and say, you know what? Um, the price is right now $20,000, $21,000. I want to go ahead and pay $19,500 because I think the price is going to fall a little bit or it's just going to bounce in between that range. And every time someone comes to sell Bitcoin for $19,500, I'm going to be the one that just grabs it. So as you can see, I'm going to put the order price right now at around $19,000 and I'm going to put how much Bitcoin I want. And as you can see, it kind of converts how much that is in dollars. So you're going to know how much you're paying. So if I go ahead and put like a 0.1 Bitcoin order, that's around $2,000. And then I just click buy BTC. Now, obviously, guys, it's only going to buy it once the price hits my order price. Now, if the price never touches that order price, that means I'm never going to get my Bitcoin and my order is not going to get complete. If you go ahead and put a $1 order price on Bitcoin, you're probably never going to get that Bitcoin because it's not going to hit $1 anytime soon. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> when you have a limit order that's still ongoing, you can find it in the bottom left. This is where it shows you your limit and market orders. Now, obviously, market orders, it's not going to show you because you buy it on the spot and that's it. But for your limit orders, you can see all the information down here. So you have your spot pairs order type. Now, the spot pair would obviously be Bitcoin USDT. That's if you're buying some Bitcoin or putting a limit order for some Bitcoin. Now, the order type is going to be a limit um, because it's the limit order you've put. Now, direction is going to be buy because you're trying to buy some Bitcoin. Order value is 
is going to be the value you've put in this case around 0.1 bitcoin or two thousand dollars and the order price is going to be the price that we put and this is only going to show up while your limit order is still in place and not fulfilled so once it gets fulfilled it goes into your past orders but while it's still there it's in your current orders guys so you can see you have your current orders your past orders and your trade history so all of this is kind of kept in like a little account sheet for you to have in your crypto all right so that is pretty much how you get all of your trading done now moving on a lot of people do use bybit for futures and leverage trading now i do want to say this is for more advanced traders guys so if you're someone beginning i would not recommend it but this is where you can actually leverage your money and trade with a lot more than you have now as i said i would not recommend it if you're a beginner but um if you're someone that does want to get into that later on i'm going to make a lot of videos teaching you guys about it so just wait until those videos come out before you do this because it is a very 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 high risk form of trading guys yes you can make a lot of money but you can also lose a lot of money so let's get straight to it guys so you want to go over back to your main page and you want to come to your derivatives account now as you can see you're going to want to load up some money in your derivatives account to do this guys now what you want to do is you want to go over to the top over to derivatives now there's three different ways guys you have usdt perpetual that there, there's inverse perpetual and there's inverse futures now for the sake of this video we're going to concentrate on usdt perpetuals guys now now when you're trading usdt perpetuals you're pretty much using your usdt as collateral for your trades as i said guys when it comes to futures or leveraging you're trading with money that you don't essentially have so you have to have some collateral where if your trade goes wrong they'll take your money so as i said this is for more advanced traders guys let's get on to it so usdt perpetual means that you're using us dollars to fund the borrowing in your account so as i said technically you're borrowing money against a contract where you are predicting that the price is going to go up or down etc now inverse perpetual means that you're actually using the coin itself as collateral so for example if you hold some bitcoin you can use that as your collateral that's what inverse perpetual is anyways we're going to use the usd tether to make it easy and we're going to do the bitcoin perpetual future for the sake of this video guys now when it comes to this type of trading you're not actually buying the bitcoin itself guys you're buying a contract now essentially you can go long or you can go short and what that says is that you are making a contract saying that hey i think bitcoin is going to go up in price to forty thousand dollars and once bitcoin does go up you're going to make that money other than that you can also make a short contract which means hey i think bitcoin is going to go down i think it's going to go to ten thousand dollars i think it's going to crash and if that does end up happening guys you are going to make money because that's what your contract says now now the benefits of futures is you can actually bet against crypto so if you're someone that's watching this video and you think that crypto is going to crash you can make money doing that and that is done by futures and you can close out your position and take the difference in the profit or loss that you have so for example if you put in a futures long trade for bitcoin to hit forty thousand and it ends up hitting thirty thousand you can close your position and take your profits it doesn't necessarily have to hit that final price but you could set that order in and obviously if you set your long order for forty thousand it's automatically going to close when it hits forty thousand but also if you want to take out your profits when you're at thirty thousand you can close your order and take out the difference that you've made in profit okay now one of the big differences you have to use margins with futures now i'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what i mean so if you come over to the top right hand side you can see it's pretty much the exact same side but over here you have leverage now so, so i'm going to click on cross right here so over here you have you have cross margin or isolated margin which i'm going to explain right now so what cross margin is let's say you have two different orders placed you have a bitcoin order happening and a ethereum long order happening so what cross margin is is let's say for example you have two different positions open a bitcoin and an ethereum so for example if at any given point your bitcoin trade is down twelve thousand dollars and your ethereum is two thousand dollars in profit it's going to close both trades because overall you're down ten thousand dollars and that is all the money you had as collateral now the other option is isolated margin which i think is a lot better because it doesn't affect your trade so in the case where you have ten thousand dollars in your derivatives account you can set an isolated margin for five thousand dollars for your bitcoin trade and five thousand dollars for your ethereum trade so for example if your bitcoin trade does end up losing you five thousand dollars it's only going to close that position and if your ethereum is making money that's not affected by what happened with your bitcoin so, so if you're someone that's setting two different orders you might want to do an isolated margin because sometimes if one coin goes up and the other one goes down you might not want both of them to be closed at the same time okay now right under guys you can see this is where you have your leverage now honestly i don't recommend putting a high leverage 
leverage at all guys but I'm not gonna give you my advice on that as you can see you can leverage your money all the way up to a hundred X so let's say guys if you have one thousand dollars you can technically trade with a hundred thousand dollars worth but that is very risky guys because if the price of Bitcoin goes down one percent you're actually gonna be losing a hundred percent but if it does go up one percent then you'll be making a hundred percent so I'm gonna quickly go ahead and put it at 2x so once you place your leverage and your order you just press confirm and that's it it'll be done for you and now you have your order now one more thing you have to watch out for when you're doing these leverage trades guys is the funding rate now you can actually find this on the top of the screen now essentially what this is when you're trading futures you are trading contracts you can see the funding rate on the screen so if you're someone that has a long position you're actually paying funding and if you're someone that's going short you are receiving funding now the funding rate happens every eight hours so every eight hours whoever's going long is paying this 0.01 percent to the people going short and if you times that into the year, which is 365 days, that's around 11%. Now, what this means, guys, and why this is important is when you're going long or when you're leverage trading, you're actually borrowing money. Because as I said, you're trading with money that you do not have necessarily. So if you put in a leverage order of 10x, 5x, 2x, this is money that you don't necessarily have, but you are trading with. So you're actually taking a loan. So pretty much you're going to be paying around 11% a year on this loan. Now, the reason reason I say that is guys let's say for example Bitcoin price is $20,000 now and you put in a long order for it to hit 40,000 if for the next one year the price of Bitcoin does not change you're gonna be paying 11% because of this order that you've placed the only reason you're doing that guys is because you're trading with money you don't have so this is technically like a loan given to you now guys obviously it's not a huge deal if you're someone that's trading on high leverages but it is something to take into account just so you know what's happening now the other thing that's different about about futures is something called the mark price now you have to look into this very carefully because the mark price is the price the system uses for all the different contracts and the thing is it's actually different from the market price slightly as you guys can see right now so why this is really important guys is let's say you have a long order for Bitcoin hitting $30,000 and the price doesn't move in your favor and it actually comes back down obviously guys once the price moves down enough and you don't have enough money um, as collateral the system is going to close your order and they close your order based on this price so not the actual price now the price is only slightly different but that's something important to take into consideration guys because because obviously that's the price you need to look out for when it comes to your order guys so so when it comes to them closing your position against you they're going to use the mark price which obviously is slightly different which is something you just need to take into consideration now the main big difference with derivatives is the fact that you can go long or short I know a lot of people watching this strongly are against crypto or Bitcoin and they do think the price is going down well with futures you can actually open a short position and what you're doing is betting against the price of it going down so if the price does end up going down you will actually make money so if you go to the top right hand side you guys you can see open long and open short position and this is kind of how you want to do it okay so I'm gonna quickly go ahead and press buy long with take profit and stop loss now take profit is the same thing guys um, basically you're saying whenever it hits a certain price I want to take this much profit out of the trade, which is something that's really helpful too, guys. So let's go ahead and do it. So right now I'm going to set my order price to around $19,000. Um, as you can see, just a bit below what the price is. Now I'm going to put my take profit at about $24,000 and I'm going to hit my stop loss at around $17,000, guys. So as I said, what this does is if Bitcoin does go down, the second hit $17,000, it's going to close my trade. But unless it does that, then the trade is open and I'm I'm still in my long position hoping that Bitcoin does go up. Now there's also another way about seeing how much risk you're taking with the Bybit calculator which I'm going to take you to it's on the top right hand corner. So what happens over here you can put basically all of your parameters you can put how much you've leveraged the quantity the price you're in and out and what it does is it calculates your risk. So once you click it into RRI you can see right now it's in the red that's because we're trading on leverage so there is a risk involved and it kind of does the calculation for you. Now obviously the more leverage you take the number is going to be even bigger because you're at a bigger risk so that's really cool anyways there you go that's been today's video guys i hope that did teach you how to start trading guys as i said if you're a beginner please only stick to spot accounts and do not leverage for now and i will do later videos to kind of explain more of that so i hope you guys enjoyed like share subscribe as i said i have a link in the description where you guys can make an account it does come with a sign up bonus um once you do deposit some money in the account so yeah all right peace love and good luck guys